Hi, my name is Kimberly Knott and I did my Educational Giants report on Noah Webster. That last name might sound familiar to you guys, or it should, because um, like the Webster Dictionary, Merriam-Webster Dictionary, he was the man who created the first American dictionary. So I'm going to give you guys a little background on him. Um, Noah was born on October 16, 1758. He just had his birthday. And... Um, he was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He had two brothers and two sisters. Um, he, he and his brothers worked with their dad outside on the form, farm, and his sisters worked inside with their mom. And Noah and his brothers were, and his sisters were all um, invited by their parents to really try and get a good education, to read and be thoughtful. And this was a huge foundation for Noah and for his life. Um, his family really supported him in in his desires to learn. Noah really loved learning. It got to the point where even when he was supposed to be working on the farm, he would go find some tree and he would sit under it and read. Um, Noah tried to was invited to attend Yale twice and was denied that opportunity twice because his family really didn't have the money. But finally, his dad agreed after he convinced him. But his dad said, fine, you can do this, but you need to do good in the world and you need to be useful. And so Noah took that with him and he really used that for the rest of his life. He married his wife, Rebecca Greenleaf, and they had eight children. He was a huge family man and he traveled a lot once they were even older to visit his children and he really um, implemented being thoughtful and studious and educated to them as well. Honestly, um, just reading about his life and all of the things that he did and all that he stood for, um, I just was so impressed by how much he wanted to help people. And so to go on to his um, accomplishments, um, I think his accomplishments really just show how much he loved people. Noah, um, after graduating from Yale, he received his master's and from by writing a dissertation on how to improve public education really started trying to do this he became a teacher and he was truthfully trying to um, improve public education he thought it should be free he thought that all kids should have the right to do that and he was even an advocate for girls going to school to be able to learn math and science and geography just like the boys he thought that they should still be learning this stuff at home but that they needed to be having this education um, after the American Revolution Noah really wanted to help um, the U.S. separate themselves from Great Britain. So he thought there was no better way than to really Americanize their language. Um, he ended up writing a three-part book. So it was in three books, but they were all kind of hook, hooked together, of spelling, um, reading, and writing. And these books had the nicknames of the Old Blueback or uh, the Blueback Speller. And these books were basically textbooks like we have now today, but teaching them how to read and how to write and how to use correct grammar. All of this was Americanized, though. He wanted to separate themselves. He wanted to help the country separate themselves from Great Britain and really establish itself. And along with that, um, Noah ended up writing a 50-page pamphlet called Sketches of American Policy. This pamphlet was information about how we could separate ourselves and, and create a good government and a good society. Um, this pamphlet was published and um, was actually a foundation for the U.S. Constitution. Um, Noah is known as the Forgotten Founding Father because he had a huge part in writing, well, informing what is the American Constitution now. James Madison even wrote him and gave him credit for what he had done. Um, and that, that's not all. Noah really just tried to go out there and help people and do what his dad said to do good and to be useful. So Noah really just spent his whole life doing that. He traveled a lot to get a lot of information from other countries. Um, and something huge that happened is yellow fever striked the U.S. And it was killing hundreds of people. And nobody knew what to do. And it was just this huge epidemic that was destroying their country. So Noah ended up sending out um, an advertisement or a solic solicitation to um, all the doctors. 
And he said, listen, send me your stuff. Send me the information that you have and about yellow fever and any other prevalent disease in the U.S. So these doctors started sending all the information that they had. And as, as Noah got it, he started compiling it together and he put it into one book about prevalent diseases in the U.S. And this was a huge accomplishment for him. By doing this, he could, these other people, once it was published, these other doctors could have this information and started to be able to um, help the American public um, become healthier. He realized that yellow fever, a huge part of the problem um, with the health was it was so filthy. People would throw trash in the streets and they, and they didn't have personal or general hygiene. So he became a huge advocate for cleaning up the streets and cleaning up our homes and being healthy and sanitary. Um, and then a huge part of um, what he learned by these books is that a lot of the words that were in these books weren't well known. So he realized that there needed to be something done. They had a dictionary from London, but it wasn't an American dictionary. So Noah went and traveled to Great Britain and to other countries in, the, in other continents and he started to take the strengths and weaknesses of dictionaries and he started writing his own and in um, at one point he wrote a 30,000 word school dictionary and that was the first dictionary that wrote and along with this dictionary he wrote a new system or created a new system of how to stress and put accent marks on on words so that people would know how to pronounce them then a few about 25 years later Noah wrote a 70,000 word handwritten dictionary and this dictionary was just huge and it took three years to publish it he finished it in 1825 but it wasn't actually published and sent out until 1828 so three years to like really just get it all done and 18 months to actually print um, he was known as the father of the American language and that was just so important to him um, so really Noah had a huge impact on me um, his life was just a huge inspiration for me he really did I could tell by just all the information I got I couldn't get wrong information anywhere it was all saying the same thing that Noah wanted to help the American people he wanted us to separate ourselves from Great Britain and and establish ourselves as Americans. He published the first dictionary, which is a huge help for us, and he really created the American language and was the first advocate for public schooling. And I know that without him, it would have been a lot difficult and we wouldn't have been able to progress as much as we have progressed now. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to have been able to study his life. Um, and I invite you all to do the same. And thank you so much and have a nice day. <laughs>